Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. Um, you can probably see I've already got a bit of a smile on my face um, because I've got some some really, really epic news. Well, it's epic for me at least. Um, I am amazingly proud. I'm so patriotic and I'm amazingly proud uh, to announce that I have been selected to fish from my country uh, in the uh, Team England Lure Squad. Um, so this happened few days ago a week ago or so and uh yeah i just kind of i've had so much amazing support from people out there that i really wanted to kind of uh, uh just make a a bit of a video give my thoughts for anyone that's not um familiar with the kind of setup we've had uh, i'll just give a little bit of history over the last few years and then ultimately um how much i want to be a bit more transparent with you guys out there because I just I just think the support is amazing and I think we've got an amazing pedigree across uh, other disciplines on the world stage so course fishing ladies carp disabled uh, fly and and I really want uh, uh, England's lure fishing team to kind of follow in those footsteps and and start making some results um, it's it, if you are familiar we haven't got the best record um, at this type of lure fishing. There's a lot of people out there that say that we are a million miles behind a lot of the Eastern European teams. So you've got the teams like um, Czech Republic, uh, Lithuania, uh, Romania, um, Estonia. They've got quite a good pedigree in this style of fishing. Um, and a lot of people think that they're light years ahead. And, and I'm I'm actually going to disagree quite um, stringently with that. I think that we are certainly heading in the right direction. I think it's one of the growing parts of um, of fishing in in general in the UK. I think uh, you know I kind of see the match fishing scene shrinking slightly, and I've been part of that since I was I think I fished my first matches when I was ten or. Uh, probably 11 or 12 actually um, but the lure fishing I can see really growing and and I think we do have the skill set there and I just think you know you've got to go through some learning curves some iterations uh, and I'm really hoping now that um, you know not not saying this in kind of an arrogant sense but I'm really hoping now that that with the new additions that we've got to the team I think we've got a very strong team now and I think if we can get our ducks in a row over the next few years I, I think we can really aim for uh, certainly a podium podium finish but let me take you back to to kind of the beginning and how it came up on my radar so um Back in 2016, I used to um, do quite a lot of lure fishing, pike in particular, uh, with my best mate, Alex. He actually lives over in Austria now. Um, but um, he basically phoned me up and said, um, I've just seen an advert and there's a trials this weekend at Langorse Lake over in South Wales um, for the England lure fishing team. Maybe we can try and uh, go along and, and get involved and see how we do. I actually couldn't make it for the weekend, but I could make the Friday. So I went along on the Friday and we had a bit of a practice and we caught a few few fish. It was quite good. And then the trial was on the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, and lo and behold, I spoke to Alex. He'd fished the two day trial. Uh, I think there was about 20 or maybe 25 anglers that had gone along to kind of compete and, and try their luck to get selected. Uh, and yeah, lo and behold, I speak to Alex on the Sunday night and he's fished quite well. He's caught some decent numbers of pike and um, he's got himself into the team, got selected. So he ended up fishing in Loch Ree uh, in 2016. And I think it was Eric Edwards, Alex, uh, Peter Haney, I think James Potts, Jamie Potts. Uh, who else was there? Dan Brackley and I think Wayne Fletcher was in there as well. Forgive me if I've got that wrong. But um, I think they they kind of did OK. They could have done better. And the history of the team, I think that was I think it started in about 2009. It's been going for kind of a few years and England have never really managed to kind of get the right combination of anglers or management, etc, etc. Anyway, Teams changed, um, and then a couple of years ago, the new management came in. So Steve Collett, uh, who probably a lot of you guys will know out there, um, 
pretty pretty famous angler in, in his own right. Uh, uh, very, very successful angler. He's won multiple big tournaments in the UK and abroad from match fishing, lure fishing, quite a few different disciplines. And he's he's an exceptional, natural, talented angler. Um, he's, he's now appointed as the... Um, as the England manager. And originally Eric Edwards, who had been fishing in the World Champs for the last few years as well, uh, was um, was assistant manager. And that's, uh, Eric retired this year and Ian Crook has taken over, who again, I think knows the scene, lure fishing, and has got quite a good pedigree of, of some competitions and certainly some PBs, some huge fish. Um, so I really feel now that, that the team is is going to go from kind of strength to strength and i hope with my inclusion you know i mean who knows uh, we might enter the team and and still not be able to pull off anything decent but i really hope that this could be a new er era in in match fishing um or competition fishing for lures um so the existing team that that the newbies have entered um is we've got um adam kirby and dan sissons uh, who've been in for a couple of years. We've got Bill Guthridge and um, there's Bill Guthridge, Richard Coles and Tom Watts. I don't know exactly how, because we've got an odd number and normally you get selected in pairs, but I'm not sure how those guys might pair up yet, but that's uh, sort of TBC. And then we've got Mark Spain and Jamie Potts, who fished the World Championships on the first day at Rutland uh, 2018. So they've got some experience and Jamie's got experience from, from Loch Ree in 2016 as well. Um, and then the new additions are, are myself and Kev Cox, who's a Fox Rage sponsored angler, um, exceptional angler. We've been a really strong boat partnership now for a probably two or three years uh, and we've just and I'll come on to this in a sec because I think it's quite important I want to give you a bit of background of kind of my thoughts and philosophy on competition fishing um, but there's me and Kev and there's um, there's Mike Maguire and Richard Haynes who again I've known Mike for 20-25 years known Richard for a fair amount of time and again they've got excellent excellent pedigree in in competitions um, so you know that's the new setup um, new management and you know, with some new additions to the team, we're all quite fresh into the team. Even the new management and new new anglers have only been there maximum sort of two years. But I really see that it might be the start of this, like I said, a new era moving forward um, and trying to really kind of get some results for, for England. Um, yeah, just to give you a kind of a bit of philosophy about my thoughts on competition fishing. I've I've worked exceptionally hard over the last uh yeah sort of three plus years in the competition scene trying to work out um really what I can call is is a competitive edge. I'm always looking for a competitive edge. So I fish a few canal matches, I fish uh, multi-species events, I fish boat events, I fish street events, uh, and I've managed to win a number of, of predator-based uh, tournaments from um, obviously ones here in the UK, right the way through to the Gunky Iron tournament that was in Rotterdam. Uh, done over two days and fished against uh, about 160 odd people I think it was so that was that was a real big one uh, I actually won that with Kev and Mike we fished in teams of three and so uh, obviously us three have now been newly appointed into the England team um, and yeah looking back on that gunky iron tournament uh, that brings back a lot of fond memories but yeah um, so Kev and I fished together a lot I do see um, Kev I think Kev has got a slight edge over me when it comes to power fishing. I think he's absolutely exceptional at it. And I would say I've probably got a slight edge over him when it comes to finesse fishing or when it's rock hard and we're just looking for the odd bite. Um, I actually really like that kind of mix because we've got a big crossover, you know, so if there's a Venn diagram, I think we've got a big crossover of skills in the middle that kind of takes care of a large percentage of, of um, you know, depending on the species or the conditions or the venue. I think we can both handle it. But then I also think that we have slight niches that we can excel in if it goes one, one way or the other. Um, yeah, I think Kev's absolutely amazing at, at power fishing. 
with crankbaits, um, big fish, fishing really positive, big shads, you know, like f forcing a bite, uh, looking for a lot of reaction strikes sometimes. And I think, yeah, I, I can, on my day, I can compete with him on that. Uh, but but when it gets hard, I think I've definitely got a bit of an advantage over him. So when it's, you know, fishing much slower methods like, um, you know, like Carolina rigs, drop shot, um, maybe a bit of vertical jigging, I just think I've got maybe a little bit more patience uh, in that department. Um, whereas Kev's always w really wanting to power fish and, and make something happen. Uh, and occasionally I have to sort of whip him into shape and get him to fish something slow and he, he does pretty well actually once I've forced him to do it but the main point that I think we make such a great pairing um, and I really have such high hopes for us now coming into the England team and being able to hopefully fish a world champs is is the fact that we've got such a good friendship and we fish together for, for quite a long time now that we can 100% trust and rely on each other so when we're in that boat um, we have a laugh, we enjoy ourselves. If there's any point in time that we're not enjoying ourselves and it happens, you guys will always know, you lose a big fish at the net, you're frustrated, something's not working for you, the other one might be out fishing you. You know, there's those times when we both know that we can recognise that in each other and we're both like call a spade a spade we both are very straight talking and i have no qualms about telling him to like wind his neck in or shut up or get on with it and likewise he will tell me like sort your shit out you lost a fish forget about it it's done we've got a job to do let's go and do it like get your head back in the game and i think that kind of sense of being able to completely rely on someone, um, especially if you're not having a great day, you're thinking, God, I, I'm just, I'm not, it doesn't suit me, I'm not having a great day, something you don't feel right, and you're thinking, God, I needed him to pull that out the bag, and he does that for me, and I, I think I can do that for him as well, you know, and so that's what I think makes us such a really good pairing um, and we're also just mates we love having a laugh we love having a beer we love interacting with all of the guys if we go to any weekend events camping events perch mania WPC any of the LAS events we love interacting with people having a laugh having a chat all of that sort of stuff um, but when it also when it comes down to the competition side of stuff we are fierce like we are we don't go to to take part we are we go to win like and we we often don't like turning up if we don't think we're in with a really confident chance of doing well and and a lot of the time we do do well our our, our his, history says that you know we've got some amazing results on on Rutland and Grafham and WPC and Xander Cup and um, you know quite quite a lot of the LAS ones, Specimen Cup, Perch Cup, you know we've won them. We're you know we're in the top threes and fours a lot of the time, and and we pride ourselves on consistently doing really well. So, um, yeah, and I guess the whole kind of point of this is is I I really want to get across that point of. I, I personally don't think the team over the the years has had enough transparency. I think people in England are really patriotic and they want to get behind a team, but I think they also need to be informed. And so this is just a little bit about me wanting to try and engage with you guys um, because it, I just feel it's so important having the support of your fellow countrymen being behind you, you know, having... Just having that, that's what a home advantage is. It's still on the same football field, but apparently the people in the, in the stadium, if, they, if there's more of them that support you than support the other team, it, it shows in results, you know? And I just think having the, those people behind us is, is so incredibly important. And I really want to start this dialogue. So if anyone's got any comments or questions or, you know, there's obviously stuff when it comes to the World Championships that 
you know, specific methods or, or whatever, we can tell you about that afterwards. So there's might be some little bits that we obviously can't explain to do with techniques and stuff. And I think you guys understand that, but I also think that you do want to be kept informed and you want to know what the plan is and how, how we're going to approach it and who's in the team and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I, I'd certainly like to be a bit more of a spokesperson uh, to make that nice and transparent. And, you know, so for example, uh, this year, the World Championships is in Poland. We're not sure if it's going to go ahead. It's in October. Um, Phipps Ed, who are the governing world body for most um, sort of fishing events, uh, are going to make a call probably within the next couple of weeks, maybe even the next week or so, on whether that goes ahead. I'm not holding my breath on it, um, which will be a real shame because of the coronavirus, but that's the way it goes. And actually, if that's... Um, if that's the way, the direction that it heads in for this year and it gets cancelled, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for us to just put even more effort into the following year. We already know it's the USA to start making contacts and working out logistics and working out costs and working out fundraisers. And there's so much other stuff that goes on, uh, you know, with uh, international fishing. Uh, and I sincerely hope that you guys really want to kind of get behind us now that we've got these new additions in the team we're, we're going into an, an existing team with existing management and um yeah uh just just get behind us guys i really hope hope that you can so yeah that's probably about all for now uh if you've got any questions or or, or comments just stick them down in the comment section below um i try and get back to to everyone and anyone um and yeah if if you do want to know more just shout as well because i think we need to start creating a dialogue now and that's how we're really going to be able to grow both lure fishing in general and uh you know maybe our results on the international on the international stage so yeah all right guys um hope you're keeping well in the coronavirus um crisis stay safe God, I'm absolutely desperate to get back out fishing. It is so frustrating now. But uh, I know we're all in the same boat, so just hold on until we're allowed. Uh, you know, represent the fishing community properly. Um, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to see too many people getting out there early and, and getting a bad name for anyone. So, um, yeah, kind of do the right thing. And until next time, um, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.